stick with this theme of consumer debt and we'll talk to somebody who works directly with Canadians who are trying to overcome borrowings that have become a burden. For his take on what we're seeing in household debt levels, we're joined by Jeffrey Schwartz, Executive Director of Consolidated Credit Counseling Services of Canada. It's great to see you. Thank you. So you're a non-profit charity. Just tell us briefly what you guys do. Well, consumers reach out to us when they're struggling with their debt or some fi personal financial issues, and we aim to get them educated and back on track. And in some cases, we have to intervene individually with their creditors to help them find a more manageable plan so that they can pay it off sooner as opposed to filing some sort of insolvency. Oh, so you will actually help negotiate uh, yes, some kind will. of a debt payment plan? Yeah. But you're not trustees in bankruptcy? We are not. Right. Will you, will you connect a consumer to a trustee in bankruptcy if, if that's uh, what seems to be the best thing? If that's the best solution for them and that's the direction they want to go in after consulting with us, yes, then absolutely we will refer them to a trustee. And we know there's pros and cons uh, to everything. Yeah. So is household debt getting worse in Canada? Are we moving towards a debt bubble? It, it seems to be growing year after year. We've been having this conversation probably for the better part of a decade yeah. now, uh, and it does seem to be growing. It, it's something that the Canadians need to look at and from what we understand there are polls out there that suggest that they do want to look at paying off their debt and that is a financial pr priority of theirs. But they still rack up more and more. Well sometimes their actions are different than what they say. Our own Francis Hardelsky was making the point earlier we, we kind of obsess over the debt to income ratio and that keeps rising but people's household assets have been going up so is the situation as black as it's painted? Well, I'm not so sure that it's as black as it's painted. I mean, Canadians are very good at paying their mortgages. They always pay for their shelter first. <coughs> and like you said, assets are going. So it's probably not the best indicator of whether or not a person's in trouble. Um, low interest rates presumably have fueled this problem. People can borrow what they think. Well, it's, it is cheap to borrow right now. And as a result, it makes it a little bit more manageable for somebody. So if they're just looking at making the minimum payments on their credit card, or if it's an interest-only line of credit, mm -hmm. then these are opportunities for people to get further into debt, yes, and manage it safely. Right, sorry, to get further into debt. Further into debt because they can manage the payments. So it's, so it's a false sense of security, you mean? It is a false sense of security, and we often call it in our office that it's the forever and ever plan because if they're really only paying the interest mm -hmm. from month to month and on the credit cards, very little principal is being paid down, yeah. then they're likely going to be in debt for decades. Yeah, and even with a line, <clears throat> a line of credit, um, once interest rates go up, the payments are going to increase. They're going to go up, but I think what we're seeing and a lot of the financial prognosticators out there are saying that even if interest rates do rise, it's not going to be so dramatic overnight. And as a result, they probably will still be able to manage their payments. So you're not seeing a massive crunch, unless we have a very rapid rise in interest rates. And I don't think anyone is predicting that right now. I think that's one of the things. But the other side of why there's a huge concern is the, the economy in Canada is changing. And we're often seeing people out of jobs or with some sort of reduced income. So maybe they get rehired back into the labor force, but it's a fraction of what they were earning before. And then if they don't have any savings, and they're in trouble. They, they might not be able to manage their debt service or how they pay their credit cards because they're carrying so much debt with the lower amount of income. And on the subject of low wages, payday loans, you're finding that's a growing problem for people? It's been a growing problem for several years now, but we're seeing it more and more. When, when people come to us, they don't just have one or two payday loans. They probably have anywhere between five and seven payday loans, and they're wanting them to be paid back in full on time, and these people can't necessarily come up with the money because they have so many of these things going on. Although laws were passed a while ago to uh, avoid some of the worst problems, I think, with these payday loans, i.e. people couldn't roll them over and just stay in debt, get worse and worse. And once they get caught into this, spiral then they'll just go to the next person who's available who is willing to give them money and you know it's not just a storefront they can also obtain the money online as well so it's easier and easier for people to get caught up into this spiral of payday loans or short-term loans. I suppose it's another side effect of low interest rates there's all that capital out there looking for a return and people are all too eager to lend it in some cases. Could be yeah. Now, your organization gets a good bit of funding from the banks. Uh, can you give us a rough amount of how much comes from the banks? Well, uh, the, it's a significant portion based on the way we're set up. But it's, as a result, I mean, the client, the banks are getting better 
clients as a result of it. It's not just us intervening on their behalf to set up debt management programs. It's really us educating consumers and our clients around how to better manage their finances. And if they have better managed, if they manage their finances better, then ultimately they become a better client for the bank. I mean, just to be devil's advocate, aren't the banks kind of getting it both ways here? They're helping to solve the problem, but they're also providing the credit cards that are getting people into trouble. Well, I believe that the I mean, credit isn't necessarily a bad thing, and, I, and I'm on that bandwagon and say if it's managed properly mm -hmm. and people can make their payments each and every month and they pay off their balances in full, which a lot of, most of Canadians do. And credit cards can be great then. Yeah, then it's yeah, a fantastic yeah. opportunity for people to manage their finances and obtain different opportunities through the use of credit cards, build their credit profile. So I'm not really here to say that it's a necessarily a bad thing. It just needs to be managed. Give us um, a regional outlook. Are you seeing more and more problems in Alberta? version. We are, and you know, we've been seeing that for the better part of a year now, and it's too bad. I mean, they could be considered a case study on when times are good, they're doing great. When times aren't so good, they're not doing so well. Uh, we also see that debt is a little bit lower in Quebec. So whereas the average non-mortgage debt in Alberta might be t over $27,000, mm -hmm. in Quebec it's somewhere over $17,000. So there is quite a, a disparity between the provinces. Non-mortgage debt more than $27,000 yes. in Alberta. I, I guess that includes vehicle loans yes, as well. Yes, that's yeah. right. That's interesting. And are you seeing an upturn in business, unfortunately, in Alberta? With We're seeing coming? a higher level of inquiry from Alberta as a result of this, yes. So uh, g give us an outlook. I mean, are we, are we headed for trouble here um, with household debt? Or, you, I mean, the rate of growth in the debt has slowed anyway in terms of the ratio to income. My concern here, and it, it's always been that Canadians are living too close to the line. Those that are in trouble are carrying too much debt and perhaps they don't have enough savings or a buffer in the event that they have a reduction in income, whether it's job loss or whether it's just a plain reduction in their income, are they going to be able to manage their debt service? And if they have no savings, because Canadians are saving at very low rates in comparison to the 70s and 80s. Is that right? Yes. Are they going to be able to withstand a reduction in income or even an interruption in income? or it's just a family emergency. Life happens, and as yeah. a result, we need to be prepared, we need to save. That's interesting, before we let you go, there's been a social shift then from the 70s and 80s. People tended to put more money away. We were seeing in the 70s and 80s that people were, were saving in the high teens even as much as 20%, wow. well, whereas now it's somewhere between three and 5%. Why were they saving so much back in those days? Maybe it had to do with the return available in the marketplace, I'm not sure, but I think it was a cultural shift in so much as people did save, and they had to pay more with capital than they did now, yeah. which is a lot on debt. It's just so easy on the internet, you can spend money, yeah. That's right. Well, listen, thanks very much. That's, that's fascinating stuff and it's a huge issue. Our guest has been Jeffrey Schwartz. He's Executive Director at Consolidated Credit Counseling Services of Canada.